every invention, every creation, every important thing that ever happened in this world started with a dream. A dream expands you. A dream shows you not only who you are, but who you can become. A dream will allow you to grow in the process of achieving it, doesn't it? And a dream will help you push through obstacles that seem impossible to push through. I'm so happy to be here with you, and I want to start by doing something. You've been sitting listening to fabulous stories for a while, so I want you to stand up now. Stand up, stand up. don't get comfortable. We're going to do something to wake our brains up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Just follow me. Let's start doing this. A little energy medicine, brain gym moves, get our blood flowing, our brains working. There we go. And you can go like this too. And you can go really crazy now. And now I want you to do this, look. One hand goes to the ceiling, the other to the ground, and now we shift. And now let's do it really fast. switch. Okay, ready to switch? Here we go. <laughs> it's a matter of practice. We're waking up the brain. All right, all right. <laughs> Give yourself a big round of applause. Welcome. Welcome everybody. I want to start today by asking you three questions. Answers are super simple because you will see them on screen. All right? But I want you to answer, where are you? Here. That was pretty good. Let's turn the volume up a little bit more. Where are you? Here. There we go. <laughs> what time is it? Now. Who are you? This yes, this moment. This moment that never existed before, never will exist again. And you know that we are oftentimes based in the past, thinking, did I forget to call somebody? Did I forget to do something? Or we're in the future. What am I going to do tonight? And in that way, we miss the only thing we truly have, which is this moment and this time that we will create together. And today we are here to talk about the power of our dreams. The power of our dreams. You know, having a dream is super important. Having a dream will a dream has the capacity to change your life. Every invention, every creation, every important thing that ever happened in this world started with a dream. A dream expands you. A dream shows you not only who you are, but who you can become. A dream will allow you to grow in the process of achieving it, doesn't it? And a dream will help you push through obstacles that seem impossible to push through. So this is the story of a little boy with a big dream. And this little boy dreamed about playing football. It was his long life dream. He wanted to play football, and so he did. Ever since he was two or three years old, he would be with a ball all day long. And one day, his parents said, this boy is really good. Let's go and take him for a tryout. So they take him to one of the big clubs in his country for a tryout. And the guys who were looking at him say, um, yeah, the boy is good. But what's wrong with him? He's too small. Look at him. He is definitely too small. Something is not right with this kid. So they take him to the doctors, 
And the doctors check him out, and they say, yeah, there's something wrong with this kid. And it's not a minor thing. In fact, it's quite a rare disease, but it's a big thing. And the big thing is that this kid was born with a growth hormone deficiency, which in essence means that his body refuses to grow. And so these guys who were about to sign the contract with him said, no, we're not going to do this. Because this kid was born broken. He was born broken. Have you ever felt broken before? Yeah? And some brave guys are putting up their hands. Have you ever felt like I'm not good enough? I'm not attractive enough. I'm not talented enough. I'm not intelligent enough. I don't have enough friends. I don't have enough money. There's something wrong with me. Well, this kid, he was born broken. And these people were not there to fix him. But you know what this kid did? The kid with the broken pencil? He said, I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep focusing on my dream. Because I will make my dream bigger than my obstacle. And I will do whatever I have to do to make my dream come true. And if that means setting my mind and reminding myself every single day, why am I here? What do I want to achieve? I will do that. And if that means doing really difficult things, like sticking needles into my legs every single day, just to see if my body will start growing, I will do that. And then he said, you know what? I will, I will set my mind to believe that this obstacle can actually be my opportunity. This can be my opportunity. I will learn how to play football in a different way. Yes, I'm not as big as the other ones. I'm not as tall as the other ones. I will have to learn to play in a different way. And so he did. And what he did, he basically got a sharpener and he sharpened his pencil. So when you get a broken pencil, what do you do? You sharpen it. And how do you sharpen a pencil? You sharpen a pencil by thinking, what can I do with what I have? What can I do with this obstacle? What can I do with what I've been given? And so he did. And he kept believing in himself. And he kept focusing on his dream. And this kid, who was nicknamed the flea in Spanish, la pulga, because of, because of how tiny he was, he became the biggest player of all times. This is the true story of Lionel Messi. Lionel Messi, the guy who has created history in soccer. As an Argentinian, I'm so proud to call this guy a fellow, well, we share our country. The guy who has been named seven times best player in the world. He has been seven times best player in the world in three different decades, which says a lot about him, because he's been doing this for quite a long time, right? This guy was a broken kid. He was born with a problem. Everyone said, you're not going to make it. Forget about it. But what did he do? Focused on the dream and made the obstacle smaller. And so the message of this story is your problems do not define you. We all have problems. They do not define you. What defines you? Your attitude. Your attitude defines you. And attitude is not a small thing. Attitude is a big thing, let me tell you. It's a huge thing. When you change your attitude, you change your results. When you change the way you're facing something, you change absolutely everything about it. So choose your attitude. Every time you can decide that. And speaking about decisions, the first step to make a dream come true is decide what you want. And you would be astonished to realize how many people have no idea what they want in their lives. Many times I ask people, so what do you want? And they bring me up a big long list of what they do not want. I don't want this body. I don't want this face. I don't want to feel this way. I don't want my parents to let me know what to do. I don't want... And what do you want? Oh, I don't know. 
I never thought about that. Oh, really? Well, that's the first thing you need to do in order to achieve your dreams. You need to decide what you want with lots of details. Now, let me tell you another true story. Who here likes animals, especially? Who, ha who likes horses? Oh, lots of you. This is a true story about a boy who loved horses. His name is Monty. Monty had a father whose his father was a horse trainer, and he was a quite violent horse trainer. So he would use violence to train horses, whips and sticks to make them obey. And he would not only be violent with the horses, but he would also be very violent with a little kid, with his son, with Monty. So many times Monty would escape from his, from his father and he would take refuge in nature. And he would spend hours and hours observing the horses. And he realized something. As he was observing the horses, he realized that horses would never use violence to teach younger horses how to do things. They would use soft body movements. And so he started dreaming and he said, what if one day I can become a horse trainer using no violence? And so one day Monty goes to school and the teacher asks him and the fellow classmates, what do you want to do when you grow up? Have you ever been asked that? Yeah. And so she said, write a, an essay about it. What's your dream? And so Monty went back home and he spent the entire night writing out his dream and he put all the details and he went back to school and he handed the essay to the teacher and he's all proud and the teacher reads it and says, uh, no, Monty, come. What you wrote here, so you want to live in California in a 62-acre ranch and you want to breed race horses, it's not going to happen. You come from a very poor family, Monty. You guys live in a trailer. It's not going to happen. So I want you to write something more realistic. I don't want you to get frustrated. So Monty goes back to his house with the essay. And what do you think he did? Do you think he changed it? No. He didn't change a single comma. So he goes back to school with the essay untouched, hands it back to the teacher. The teacher is reading it again and says, OK, Monty, um, I don't think you understood. If you don't change this, I will give you an F, an F for fail, you know, for zero. So Monty looks at her and says, fine, you keep your F. I keep my dream. I'm going to repeat that. He says, you keep your F, I keep my dream. Do you think that's a cool answer? Give him a clap, because it's a true story. His fame, he started getting really good in this technique, and he started being world known, and the Queen of England, who's very fond of horses, who loves horses, heard about him, so he calls she calls him and says, hey, Monty, will you come and show me what you do with horses? I want to learn. And so he's there with the queen and she's very impressed with what he's doing. And so she says, hey, Monty, you need to write a book. And so he does. And he wrote a book that is called The Man Who Listens to Horses. The book became an international bestseller. And today, Monty Roberts lives in California and he lives in an ranch that is how big how many acres 62 acres and he breeds of course yes and so this story tells you that never ever let anybody tell you that your dream is not going to happen don't let anybody tell you hey stop dreaming be realistic no no dream big Go for it and did do what Monty did. He wrote it down. You know, there's power in writing, writing down your goals. Who here writes down your goals? Raise your hands. Mm, a fair amount, fair amount. Let me share some powerful research with you. So research shows that only 4% of people, 4% of people who do not write down goals and dreams attain them, reach them, while 44% of people who write them down, reach them. And that if you write them down, who here 
Uh, most of you or many of you raised your hand when I said, do you write down your goals? Do you also reread them very often? Okay, a lot less hands. If you reread them often, your chances go way up, 200% more, just by rereading it. This is all research from University of Virginia. And I'll give you one more thing, just in case anybody there is sitting and saying, mm, I don't know, I don't know, I'm wondering. Research shows that people who write down their goals and reread them all the time earn, gain, make nine, time more, nine times more money than those who don't. So, how about that? It is interesting. It's a very simple thing you can do that can bring you very big results. And I've known this for a while. And so when I published my first book, and I did this with my mother in the year 2010, we published our first book. And within two weeks, we received a phone call. We were driving to the city, we received a phone call from our editor, and he says, hey ladies, I'm calling to congratulate you. I said, oh wow, what happened? You just made it to the bestseller list. And this is the dream of any author. When you write a book, your dream is to become a best-selling book, which means Basically, everyone is right reading your book. And so we were so happy. And I'm on the phone, and my mom is driving, and I tell her, we just became bestsellers. And she looks at me, and she goes, what day is today? And I go, um, we're in August, right? And I'm like, yeah, mom, do you feel okay? She says, August 2010? Yes, mom, August 2010. And she says, oh, there's something I need to show you. We need to go back to the office. So she turns around. We go back to the office and she starts looking through the papers and the folders. And she says, I need to show you something. There's a paper. And I've been looking at this paper forever. It has to be somewhere here. And then she finally finds, finds it. And it's like all, you know, it's old and wrinkled. And she hands it over to me and she says, read this, please. And this little paper says, write a best-selling book by August 2010. The most interesting part of this piece of paper is that it had been written by her 10 years before we wrote the book. So when she wrote that piece of paper, we had no idea we would write this book. We had no idea. It was not in our plans. It was not even in, you know, it was not there. We were not even working together. But she wrote it down. And it happened not only in the year she wrote it down, but in the month she wrote it down. And so that's why I want to encourage you guys, write, write down your goals. Because something magical could happen. Something magical happened to us. We, our book got published in I don't know how many languages. We were the first women in 40 years to receive a Golden Book Award. So many wonderful things happened just because of that. So now I want you to take a minute and think, what is your dream and write it down. It could be something short. It could be something you want to achieve in five years, in 10 years. It could be something you want to achieve in a lifetime. It doesn't matter when, write it down. Think about this paper you're writing right now. It could be the little paper, wrinkled paper, where we wrote our dream. And you know, it could change your lives. <laughs> and if it does, please tell me about it in a few years. I'd be very happy to know that, okay? <laughs> All right, we're moving on to now. So step number one is decide what you want. And we've just done that. Just like Monty Roberts, just like I did, decide and write it down. And step number two has to do with believing in yourself. And believing in yourself is a huge topic, but if there's one thing that you can do right now to start believing in yourself, you know what that is? Start talking to yourself like you would talk to your best friend. Would you tell your best, let's just say your best friend is going through a really rough time. Would you tell him or her, you're such an idiot. You always screw it up. You always do the same thing. Would you say that to your best friend? No, would you? But don't you say it to yourself? We all do, right? 
It's a matter of changing the way we talk to ourselves. The words we say to ourselves have enormous power. Enormous power. If we say to ourselves, I'm never going to make it. I'm too dumb. I'm too slow. I'm never going to be able to do this. Guess what happens? You're never going to be able to do it. But if you start telling yourself, I can do this. I can learn this. I can, then your brain starts shifting. Your energy starts shifting. And everything changes. Let me tell you a quick story. I was once coaching a young guy. He was in his last year of medical school. And he came over to me and he said, I have a dream. And my dream is to work on one of the most prestigious hospitals in my country. But I have a problem. I have to sit for an exam where another thousand candidates are going to sit for. And I need to come out among the top 10. If I'm not among the top 10, out goes my dream. I can forget about it because I'm not going to be admitted to this hospital. I said to him, fine, have you studied for this exam? And he says, yes. Did you give your very best? Yes. But then he says, yeah, but many times I've studied. And you know what? It, I've never been among the top 10. And so I tell him, there's one thing you need to do right now. And the first thing you need to do is to stop saying, I've never been a top 10 student. And he says, but it's the truth. And I tell him, fine, but you want to change that, don't you? Yes, I want to change it, but it's the truth. Stop saying it. Stop saying it right now. If you want to change that reality, change what you're saying to yourself. And he says, so what can I say to myself? How about you say, I deserve to perform at my best? He says, okay, I can do that. I told him for the next 10 days, because we had 10 days till the biggest exam, I want you to repeat, I deserve to perform at my best. And he did it. And I said, if you have to repeat it 100 times a day, do it 100 times a day. Fine. So he goes, exam day finally comes, sits for the exam, two days later results are published. He goes and finds the results, and this is how they do it. They print out the names of the thousand candidates and they stick them to the walls of the university. So this guy basically has to walk into the university and look for his name there. So he goes to the top 100, because sometimes he would fall into the top 100. N name is not there, keeps walking. Top 80, name is not there. Top 70, name is not there. Keeps going, keeps going. Top 50, not there. Top 30, not there. Top 20, not there. And by now, he says, I'm sweating and my heart is racing and I go to the top 10 list and I start looking for my name and I go 10, 9, 8. And he says, my name is not there. And he says, did I not even make it to the top 100? And as I'm turning on my back, dragging myself to find my name beyond the top 100, a friend comes rushing over, grabs me by the hand and says, Hey, bro, come check this out. Did you see this? And he's like, all confused. You came out number one. Number one. So you see, change can happen fast. If you change the way you talk to yourself, if you choose a power phrase, because that's what he had, I deserve to perform at my best, it's a power phrase. Everything changes. And it can be really fast. So I want you now to choose what would your power phrase be. If you had to tattoo something on yourself, his phrase was, I deserve to perform at your best. Yours could be, I believe in me. I can do it. I am capable. I deserve success. I deserve happiness. Abundance is my birthright. Whatever it is, write it down. What will your tattoo be? You have it? Oh, there's a few who are really fast. Do we have some mics? All right. Because I want you guys to raise your hand, the ones who are ready to share. What would your phrase be? Let's have a few. Let's lower the music just a little bit. Okay, let's go with the phrases. Yeah. 
I deserve every good thing in the world. I, I deserve it. I love it. I deserve every good thing. Yes, there's more right here. Let's bring the mic and do it as dynamic as possible. Yes. I have infinite power within me. I have infinite power within me. Yes. I am I winning no matter what. I am? I am winning no matter what. I am winning no matter what. Yes. I can do anything. I can do anything. Yes, you can. I deserve happiness. You deserve happiness. Yes, you do. I am destined for greatness. I am destined for greatness. Yes. Yes. Do we have some more? Yeah. I can do it and I deserve to do it. I I can, I can I do can it. I can do it and I deserve to do it. I can do it and I deserve to do it. Yes, big round of applause. Yeah. Step number three is all about taking action. So once you decide what you want and you believe in yourself, you need to take action. So speaking about action, I have a question for you. Who wants this? Oh, many hands. I'm going to keep asking. Who wants this? <laughs> oh, so sorry. There you so go. Sorry. No, so sorry. I'm going to... here to clap you. <laughs> give her, give her an applause. And you want to, you're going to stay here. What's your name? Marianne. Marianne, can we have a mic? Marianne, congratulations. Thank you. That's taking action. Did you feel a little bit of your heart pumping? A little bit. Yeah, a little yeah. bit? Like palm sweating, heart pumping? Yeah. And thinking, should I go or not? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. This is what taking action looks like. This is what taking action looks like. Your heart will race, <laughs> you will feel a little sweaty, you will doubt yourself, but if you do it, you get a reward. Big round of applause. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and for all of you sitting there wondering, should I have gone up? Yes, you should. Taking action is leaving your comfort zone. Taking action is doing what others are not willing to do. Taking action, and this is a reminder, taking action, you need to leave your safe place and risk it. Do what others are not willing to do, even if you're scared. Because you know how sometimes you are scared to do things. But then you need to push through the fear and do it anyway. And let me share a story about how one time I was super scared, Sca really scared. The scariest moment I've ever had. So I was signed as a speaker by Sony Music and they decide that my big debut as a speaker and my opening night tour in Latin America was going to be in this theater, Maipo Theater, which is the most iconic theater in Latin America. The biggest ballet dancers dance there, the biggest artists everywhere. And so they say, you need to go there. And two weeks before opening night, I start obsessing about, will people buy tickets to come see me? I'm not an artist, I'm just a speaker. And so I'm talking ugly stress, you know, tossing and turning in bed all night kind of stress. Um, snapping at my husband for no reason kind of stress, anxiety, diarrhea kind of stress, you know that kind of stress? Ugly stress. And then one day when I'm about to cancel everything, call my manager and tell him, you know, cancel this, it's not going to work, I'm going to embarrass myself. Then I remember a mantra, powerful mantra. Do you guys know what a mantra is? Yeah, most of you do. do. So it's a thing that you repeat to yourself to feel calm and to change your energy, all right? So I remember this mantra taught to, to me by a friend, Jack Canfield. And he said, every time you're really scared, you chant this for a few minutes and your energy changes instantly. So I want to teach this mantra to you. Are you up for it? Yes. Okay, so t think about something that scares you a little bit, but you want to do it anyway, all right? And we have some music here, here I think. So, close your eyes. No, no, don't close your eyes. In fact, do this. Put your thumb and index finger together. We're going to ohm a few times and then we're going to chant, all right? You got it? Start breathing deep in through your nose, out through your mouth. One more time. In through your nose, out through your mouth. One more time. We're going to ohm together, all right? Take a deep breath in. Ohm. 
one more time. Oh. Deep breath in, one more time. And now we're going to chant. Oh, what the heck, go for it anyway. Open your eyes. Oh, what the heck, go for it anyway. Stand up. Oh, what the heck, go for it anyway. Oh, what the heck, go for it anyway. When you're really scared, oh, what the heck, go for it anyway. Imagine we have an energy ball. We're gonna bounce it from the ground to the sky, okay? Oh, what the heck, go for it anyway. Oh, what the heck, go for it anyway. Oh, what the heck, go for it anyway. Oh, what give some energy anyway. Freestyle it. What the heck, go for it anyway. Oh, what the heck, go for it anyway. Oh, what the heck, go for it anyway. Oh, what the heck, go for it anyway. Yay. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> That's something you can repeat to yourselves when you're really scared and you want to do something anyway. And let me tell you how this night ended so you can take a seat a little bit. We have our few minutes left. So opening night finally came and I was in the back of this huge theater with my mother standing there and we listened to some voices in the, in the, in the room. So we think, well, someone came, someone bought a ticket. Maybe it's just friends and family, but who cares? What the heck? We're going to do it anyway. And so as the curtain starts to rise, my jaw dropped because this is what we got. We had full room, sold out tickets, people standing in line. We had to give the show four times in a row. We had the longest and loudest standing ovation we had ever received. And to me, that was a big lesson. There's many things you will have to do, even if you're scared, even if you don't feel ready. Just Push through the fears. Do it with a fear with you, with your self-doubts all over you. Do it anyway. So what the heck? Do it anyway. And you will feel the power of that. And so we got step number one, decide what you want. Step number two, believe in yourself. Step number three, take action. Step number four is more than a step. It's an attitude towards life. And it has to do with perseverance. There is a tree that is called the Japanese bamboo that is probably, sometimes some people call it the slowest growing tree in the world because this is what happens. The bamboo grower plants the seed and for one entire year he sees nothing, just soil. Just imagine, you plant a seed, you take care of it, you water it, nothing. Second year he keeps taking care of the land, what happens? Nothing. Three years, nothing. Four years, nothing. Five years. Can you imagine taking care of a seed for five years? Nothing happens. Suddenly, after six years and seven months, out of nowhere explodes this plant that grows 32 meters in one month. Five centimeters per hour which means if you look at it closely, you watch it grow. And the question is, what was happening in those six years and seven months when apparently nothing was happening? What was growing there? The roots, exactly the roots that were there to support the incredible growth that would happen one day. So if your dreams take a little bit more time, don't worry. Don't buy into the lies that social media sell us that everything has to be an overnight success. It's simply not true. It's not true. Just keep going. Persevere. Persevere and you will see how powerful your dreams can be. There's great power in your dreams. And the big power in your dreams comes from knowing that even if you get 
a pencil that feels broken, you can sharpen it. And by sharpening it, I mean by thinking about your dream, by setting your mindset to the point where you believe in yourself more than in your obstacles. And you can achieve amazing things with that. So first step is decide what you want. Decide what you want in detail. And if somebody tells you, this is too big for you, be realistic, you tell them, you keep your F. I keep my dream and write it down. Even if it's a wrinkled old paper, it might come true. It will come true if you believe it's so. And it will not only come true, but it could give you some extra cash. So go for it. And also remember that the first step to believe in yourself is change the way you talk to yourself. So if you go from I've never been to I deserve to perform at my best, everything, absolutely everything changes and use power phrases. Use power phrases that empower you. Think of your tattoo, what would that be? Have it very clear in your mind. And remember the importance of taking action. Don't sit there and wait. Do what others are not willing to do to get the results of that, that others would not get. And if you're feeling really scared, what the heck? I'm gonna do it anyway. And remember, remember to persevere. There's huge power in doing that, in persevering, in going for your dreams, no matter what. And the best time to get started with all of this, the best time to get started with absolutely all of this, let's say it all together, is here, now, and in this moment. Thank you guys very, very much. <laughs>